Welcome back to Math for Game Developers, the triumphant return after a small break, and I'm very excited to start this week a series on numerical analysis, which is one of my favorite topics, and we are going to start with a very old example. If we have player one, player A, at the location zero one, and player B at the location one, two, at that coordinate, then what is the distance between the two players? Well, we know how to solve this. We should, we should know this one pretty well already. And if we don't, um, you can look at the first few videos in this series and find out. But we say B minus A, and that gets us a vector V, and then we take the length of the vector V, which is, uh, sorry, one, one, the vector one, one, we take the length of the get that, and we get one squared plus one squared square root of that is square root of two, which is about 1.4142135624, etc., etc. So that was a pretty easy problem that we all know how to do. But my question to you is, how do we represent this number, which continues forever? It never repeats. There's no pattern. There's an infinite amount of information in this number. How do we represent it in a computer, which has only a finite amount of information in it? Um, not only that, but we want to be able to represent very large numbers like 9,386,420,867 or 0.000000000000013. We want to represent we want to be able to represent all of these numbers and we would prefer if they didn't have any weird behavior uh, if they just acted like normal numbers. And that's what floating point numbers are. They are a way to represent uh, fractional numbers and very large numbers and very small numbers all in the same format so that they can be represented um, and manipulated easily. But of course, we can only fit so much information into uh, just a few bits that, that the floating point number uses to store the number. So we have to cut it off somewhere. We can't store an infinite number of digits. So that's the first lesson. That's what floating point numbers do. They truncate the um, remaining digits, which are really so small as to be insignificant for most purposes. So we really don't need them. Uh, so like here, for this large number, 9 billion yada yada 867, we might chop these two digits off and turn them into zeros. And we get a number that is 67 off, yes, but compared to 9 billion, 67 is a very small amount. And so floating point numbers are an approximation of real numbers. So how do they work on the inside? Well, floating point numbers actually use a very simple principle that you may remember from grade school, which is scientific notation. If you remember, scientific notation works like this. You have a number b times 10 to the e, where b is called the significant, significant, and b is always between 1 and 10, okay? And e is called the exponent. B is the significant, E is the exponent. And E is always an integer. <clears throat> and the computer uses some bits to represent B the significant and some bits to represent E the exponent. And we'll see how that works down here. I'll draw you a table, okay? Bits. There are three kinds of floating point numbers. There are half precision, 
there are single precision, and there are double precision. And they each use a different number of bits to store the significant and the exponent. For half precision, there are 16 bits total, both for these, so th these, are, these bits are shared for the, si for the significant and the exponent. For single precision, there are 32 bits to go around for both of them, and for double precision, there are 64 bits to go around. Um, now, of course, if you have more bits to represent a number, then you will be able to represent a greater range of numbers. Your exponents will be able to get larger. Your significant will be able to get longer. And so where you cut off the number right here depends on which one you use. So the more bits of precision you have, the farther to the right you can cut off the, the, the floating pin, the point number. And so the more precision that you get in your representation, this is really important that floating point numbers can only give you so many digits for half precision you get between three and more three and four digits in decimal uh, so you would have to cut it off about here for single precision you get between seven and eight digits and for double precision you get about 15 or 16 digits of precision again in decimal so Where was I? So you can represent a wider range of numbers with more bits. However, why don't we always just use the double precision number? Well, the answer is that they're slower. They take up more space. So if you remember from our um, optimization video, the space in each level of cache is very precious. So we want to take up as little of it as possible, and we get twice as much if we use singles instead of doubles. So in practice, people do tend to use singles instead of doubles because they don't need all of this extra precision, and singles are a little bit faster to compute. So how do we actually use these? Well, if you ever have seen this keyword, float x, Okay, in C, this is how you create a floating point number. X is a variable that will now be a floating point number. Um, and if you want to create a double precision, you say double Y. And now Y will be a double precision floating point number. Uh, and this is how you do it in C and C++ and Java and C Sharp and all the other similar programming languages. In JavaScript, which is a, a weird language in many ways, every number, including integers, are stored as doubles. So um, that's a good thing to watch out for if you're, if you're programming in JavaScript, things are a little bit different, obviously. Uh, now, what about half precision? How do we use those? Well, half precision are actually a little bit different you can't use them on a regular CPU, like an Intel or an AMD CPU. Uh, they're only primarily used in video cards. So when we did our series on shaders, we were using, under the hood, we didn't even know it at the time, uh, but we were using half precision numbers that were storing between three and four digits of precision uh, to do all the shader operations that we did, the rim highlighting and the immersion surfaces and all this stuff. So, so that's the introduction floating point numbers, what they are, and um, how they're useful as as uh, as game designers. Obviously, all all you know, every vector class you're ever going to write uses these floating point numbers. So they're important for us to understand well. And we're going to get really deep into uh, how, like how they work, what operations can you do on them, the uh, errors that pop up, and like problems in using them in the future videos. And then we're going to continue on later in the series to some numerical algorithms that we can use to compute interesting results. Uh, so I'll see you then.